uh, this is lesson 73. I think that's the right number. Did I write the right number? 73? Okay. Graphing quadratics with solutions. So um, students will graph quadratics and identify solutions. So remember the answer is where the lines cross, right? That's kind of a concept we have in math. We already know, you should already know how to graph quadratic graphs. Miss Good taught you that from before. Um, we're going to talk about how we're going to talk about how that works today. So, um, remember quadratic graphs, they look like this, right? And you have a vertex, right? Does that make sense? Last Friday, Miss Good taught you a lesson, or on Lost Lessons, she taught you how to solve uh, this kind of equation, where it's x squared plus 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. And then she said factor aside, right? Remember we're doing the factoring on Friday, or Thursday, I'm sorry. So you got x plus 2 times x plus 1 on the left. If I were to do x box, you have the left side is equal to that. Remember this on Friday or Thursday? And you have it at all equal to 0. Okay. And then we use the zero product property of x plus 2 is equal to 0 and x plus 1 is equal to 0. Okay. Remember this? And we, used, we solved each of these and it's like x is equal to negative 2 and then x is equal to negative 1. These are solutions. These solutions are where the x-intercepts are, okay? These solutions are where the x-intercepts should be. Does that make sense? This graph is not this graph, by the way. This is not the same as this. Yes? So will there ever be y's on it? Y's? No. no. Today we're going to talk about using the graphing calculator to help us do this more quickly, but um, no, there's just going to be the x. If there's a y, then we need to change it to 0. Usually there's a y at the end or in the front. Okay? Anyways, these solutions, one more time, these solutions are where the answers are supposed to be, the x-intercepts. Okay? That's the big idea. Here we go. Uh, the steps are right here. Graph the equation, and then we're going to identify solutions where the graph crosses the x-axis. Okay, so looking at number one. Pencils down right now? Pencils down. I'll give you a chance to write. So it says graph and identify the solutions. So we're going to graph. We already know how to graph, or you should know how to graph. These are two different ways to write a di two different equations. This is vertex form. That's the standard form. So we got y is equal to 2 times x minus 1 squared minus 2. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is find my h and k. I know that my graph needs to look like... Uh, <clears throat> or it's going to be x minus h, so this should be my first point, x minus 1, so this h is 1, and then our k is negative 2, okay, and then our a is equal to 2, right here. So if a is equal to 2, I can make a table from my vertex, if I were to go left or right 1, I'm going to make a table to show left or right 1 and left or right 2, just like from before. If I go left to right 1, I can put 1 into x, 1 squared is 1, 1 times 2 is 2. Then I'm going to go left to right 2 from my vertex. So I'm going to put plus or minus 2. When I put 2 into here, 2 squared is 2 times 2, or I'm sorry, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. Okay? All right, so now we have our vertex is going to be 1, negative 2. I'm going to plot a point right there. And then I'm going to go left, right, 1. Left or right, 1. I'm going to go up, 2. So I'm going to put a point here and here. Right? Because if I go left or right, 1, I'm going to go up, 2, and plot a point. Then I'm going to go back to the vertex. Left or right, 2. Right, 2. And I'm going to go up 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There should be a point right here. And the same thing. I'll go back to the vertex. Left 2. Up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, right there. Then I'm going to graph my graph. Okay. And then I ask myself, where does this graph cross the x-axis? This is the new thing for today. Where does it cross the x-axis? It crosses here and here. What are these points? Well, this one is 0, 0. And the other one is 2, 0. 2, 0. Okay? So I, I ask myself, what is x equal to on each of these? What is x equal to? x over here is equal to 0 here. And on the second one, what's x equal to? 2. 2. Good. 
Okay? Those are your answers, right? That's it. We're done with number one. So you all know how to graph, but after we graph, we can see where the solutions are. The solutions are where the, the graph crosses the x-axis. Okay? The solutions are where the graph crosses the x-axis. Where are the solutions? When the graph crosses the x-axis. Okay, good. Excellent. Number two. This one's different, but we can still do it. Is this one in vertex form? Is there an H and K? Is there an H and K on number two? Hats and hoods off, please. Thank you. Is there a, is there a H and K on this one? No, there is not. So then what do we need to do? We start with negative B over 2A. We talked about this before. So we got B is negative 8. We know that A is equal to 1. And then C is 17. So negative B over 2A. So it's going to be negative, negative 8. Okay. 2A. A is 1. So it's going to be 2 times 1. Then I simplify. Negative, negative 8 is equal to 8. And then 2 times 1 is 2. So 8 divided by 2 is 4, okay? That's the first part of my vertex. So I write my vertex as 4. And then I have to figure out what the second one is, so I have to plug it back in. I go back to the very beginning. 4 squared, so I put 4 into x. 4 squared is 4 times 1 is 4. I'm sorry, 4 squared is 16. 16 times 1 is 16. Sorry about that. Then I put 4 into here. Negative 8 times 4 is negative 32. Then I put, uh, bring up the 17 up here, and then I simplify this, or I evaluate it. 16 minus 32 is negative 16. 16. 16. 16. Ne I'll talk. Thank you. Negative 16. Negative 16 plus 17 is 1. Okay? So our vertex is at 4, 1. And then we do the same thing as last time. We do our table. We go left or right, 1 based upon what A is, okay? So if I go left or right 1, 1 squared is? What's 1 squared? 1. 1 times 1 is? 1. So I'm going to put in 1 here, okay? If I go plus or minus 2, 2 squared is? 4. 4 times 1 is? 4. Okay? Then I go to my vertex. 4, 1. Go 1, 2, 3, 4. Plot my point 1. That's my vertex. I'm going to go left one unit, and I know I'm going to go up one unit, so there should be a point here and here. If I go right two units, I'm going to go up four units. I go one, two, three, four, up to here and there. Okay, and then I'm going to graph my graph, and then I'm done graphing. But today I want to find solutions. Where does this graph cross the x-axis? Does it cross the x-axis at all? No, it doesn't. So we would say there's no solution, or to be more specific, there are no real solutions on this one. That would be the answer when it doesn't cross. Okay? Two different graphs. The process is you find the graph, and then you identify solutions where it crosses. Okay? That's it. Any questions on number one or two? Okay, what I'd like you to do, let's have one still of twos. Continuing on to number three, okay? So number three, I wrote in A as one, right? Was there a one there before on A? What's A equal to on number three? One, right? Okay, what's our H and K? If you know that our vertex should be H and K and your, your form should be like this, what is your H and K? Turn to your neighbor and explain what H and K are here. Okay, what are H and K, everyone? H is what? Negative 4. And K is? Negative 1, right? You just kind of do the opposite sign, right? Okay. Okay, so now we're going to make a table. We're going to go left or right one, or plus or minus one. If I put in one here, I'll do the first one for you. One, let's put one in here for x. One squared is? What's one squared? One. Times our a is? One. So we're going to put a one here. Let's do two. What's two squared? 
2 squared is? 4 times 1 is? 4, good. Okay, let's plot this. Okay, now iPad's out. We're going to plot this. And the way I want you to plot it is the following. You're going to go to Deseri, and I want you to not use just the graph paper, but there's one that's called graph axes. That's the background. Graph axes. Okay. So the way you get to that is you start a new presentation. Click the background, and then it says graph axis. You gotta switch to all of this a little bit. Okay, here you go, because I don't want you to spend time making a graph. Okay, here we go. So, we're going to graph R. Yep. Okay, then just do it on your paper. Sorry, some of them are done. So you got negative 4, negative 1. So you're going to go down negative 4, and then down to negative 1 right here. Graph your point. Okay. Now we're going to go left, right, 1. So that means we're going to go up 1. So we're going to go left 1, right 1, and go up 1 from there. So we should have points here and here, right? So... Plot those points. Now we're going to go back to the vertex. We're doing this together. Looking at the vertex again, we're going to go left, right two, and then we're going to go up four and plot a point there. Okay. And then we're going to graph our graph as follows. Right? And this up to now, this is all review. You should all know how to do this already. Okay? Now, we are talking about solutions. Turn to your neighbor and identify the two solutions that are here. Okay? What are your two solutions? Okay, what's our first solution? Negative three zero. And what's the second one? Good. So you should write these down. These are the ordered pairs of the roots, right? But then we can figure out our solutions are going to be x is equal to what? What's the first one? What's x equal to? What? What's x equal to here? Negative 5. So we're going to write negative 5. What's the second solution? x equals negative 3. Okay, that's it. That's number number 3. Is that hard? No. No, it takes a little time, right? It takes effort, right? It's just kind of like a lot of stuff coming together. Okay, number four. Let's start this one out. Here we go. iPad just clicked off and face down. You don't have to turn them all the way off, just uh, so the screens are off. You'll come right back in a couple minutes. Here. Okay, back to your notes. Let's write down number four. Write down number four, please. Okay, so number four, y equals, what is our a equal to here? One, good. What's our h and k? What is it again? h is? It's negative one, and our k is four. Okay, that's your vertex, okay? Now we're going to make our table. We're going to go plus or minus one. If I go left, right, one, Left, right, one. Let's plug it in. What's one squared? One, one times one is? One. one. Good. Cool. Let's go left, right, two. Two squared is? Four times our A is? Four, right? Isn't this the same table as on number three? Why is it the same? Why are these two tables the same? Because of what? I heard someone say it. Because of, don't we have the same A, right? Who said A? I heard someone say it. Okay. Why are they the same? Because of what? Hey, Art, Art said it, right? A, right? Why are they the same? Because A is the same. Good. Now let's graph this. Go back to your iPads. Let's write, graph this one. I'll give you a minute to graph it. Okay, looking up here, we got negative <laughs> 1, 4. 
We're going to put our point here, and then we are going to go left, right, one. It means we're going to go up one in each direction. Left, right, two. We're going to go up four in each direction. Draw your graph. And then we um, ask ourselves, does this graph touch the x-axis at all? No. So if it doesn't, that means it's no real solutions. Okay? Well, technically there are solutions. We're going to talk about that this, this uh, next few days on how this could give us solutions. But they're not real. There's imaginary numbers in math that you learn in Algebra 2. But for now, you just have to know there's real solutions or non-real solutions. Okay? You there? Okay. All right, good. Next one, number five. Let's just worry about number five. This will be the last one. And then we're going to switch gears a little bit. So, I got a question for you. Is does this in vertex four? Is there form? Is there an H and K here? No. No, the standard form. This is like number two. So what's our A? A is equal to one. Good. B is equal to negative two. C is there a C? What number represents nothing? So Z, C should be zero. We'll assume it's zero, but I'm not gonna put it up there because there's just more numbers. Okay. So what do we start off with when we're trying to find the vertex on this kind of problem, or this form? Okay, nice and loud again. Uh-huh. Negative B over 2A. Good, negative B over 2A. Good, so we're all writing this down. We're plugging it in. So we got negative B. We said B is negative 2. So it's going to be negative, negative 2. All over 2 times A. A is 1. Okay. Okay, so I got a question for you. What is what is this going to turn out to be? What's negative negative two equal to? Positive two. What's two times one? Okay, what's two divided by two? One, right? So our vertex will be at one something, right? How do I get the rest of the vertex? What do I need to do to get the rest of it? Look back at number two. What do I do? What do I do to get the second number? We plug it back in, right? Plug this back in. What's 1 squared? 1 times 1. Good. So this is 1, right? What's negative 2 times 1? Negative 2. Negative 2. So it's really like saying 1 minus 2, right? What's 1 minus 2? Negative 1. Good. So we're going to put in negative 1 over here. That's your vertex, okay? Now we're going to do a table again, okay? Art, what's A equal to here? One. One, good. Isn't this the same A that was on numbers three and four? Yeah. So shouldn't we get the same table as numbers three and four? Yeah. Yeah, so you should just notice that there's a pattern here, right? Because if you go left, right, one, let's put this in here for A. One squared is? One. Times one? one. Well, isn't that the same thing here? Yeah. Two squared is? Four. Times one? Oh, good. Let's start graphing and finish this up. Tell me what your solutions are. On this one, there's your graph, right? Do you all agree? Where does it cross the x-axis? How many times does it cross, first of all? Two, right? So we got an answer here and an answer here. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, my fat finger there. So that means there should be two answers. What's x equal to in the first one? Zero, what's x equal to here? Two. two. So your answers are going to be zero and two. Okay? Does that make sense, everyone? Good, okay? Now, why do we do this? I want to talk about why we do this. Look up your eyes up here right now. No more uh, iPads. iPads clicked off and face down, please. I don't want you to be distracted because this part's really important. Okay, remember on Thursday, Ms. Good was talking to you about solving quadratics by factoring. So I'm going to do the same problem, but the way she did it on Thursday, okay? Because you need to know both. Would you agree that this, this is the same problem that we just started with on number five? Would you agree that this is the same problem as that? Yeah. Okay, good. So on fr Thursday, this is what she taught you. She said, change y to zero. Eyes up here. I know we're really tired, but we have some stuff to get through. y is equal to zero. Then we got x squared minus 2x, right? 
And then she said, take this side and factor it. Can I factor anything out of the right side? Can I factor a GCF? Yeah, what's our GCF here on both of them? X, good. So I'm going to factor out an X here. This is like saying X, oh, sorry. X times X minus 2, right? And then she taught you about the zero product property. I need, kids, you're zoning out. Okay, so on Friday, she taught you about the zero product property. So each of these is its own factor. So you take X and you set it equal to zero, <coughs> right? And then you take X minus 2, set it equal to zero. And then you ask yourself, can I simplify this anymore? So X is equal to zero, right? Would you agree? Good. And then over here, what should I do to solve for X? Add two, right? So zero plus two is two. So would you agree that these are my two answers here? Aren't these the same two answers as I got over there? Oh, so there's two ways to do the same math problem, right? You could either factor or you can graph. Which way is better? Either. It doesn't matter. Whatever you feel comfortable with. Now, isn't it kind of a pain to graph by hand? Yeah, but what do we have now? We have graphing calculators like Desmos, okay? So let's apply that to here. That concludes the lesson here um, for, well, I'll keep going on the video, okay? Okay, so remember when Miss Good taught you this? She said, like, let's say we want to solve this x plus 1 is equal to 3. Remember this? And then at the beginning of the year, this type of problem, I said x plus 1 is equal to 3. How do you solve for x? What do you need to do to solve for x? We use sad map. How do you get x by itself? What would you do? Subtract 1, which is equal, or sorry, subtract 1 on both sides. So x is equal to what? 2, Two right? Does that make sense? OK. I can use Desmos, right? Let's say I set the left side is equal to y is equal to x plus 1, the right side y is equal to 3. Why don't you all pull out Desmos really quick? And I want you to do that. I want you to take two equations. So the lines cross at 2, 3. Right? So what's x equal to there? What's x equal to where the lines cross? 2, 3. No, what's x equal to where the lines cross? x equals to what? 2. 2. Isn't that the answer I just got a minute ago? Isn't that the same answer as here? Do you all see that? Now this was an easy problem. Was it easier to just do it by a hand or just to or to graph using decimals? What was easier? Really? By hand. I think it would have been easier by hand because I could have just subtract one on both sides. I could have just done it in my head, right? Makes sense. Now, but what if what if I'm talking about? So the point here is that this is the same as this, right? Now I'm going to keep going here. On your iPad, let's use decimals to graph the two sides of this equation. Okay. So let's start. Let's take this whole left side of the equation. We're going to do what we just did. We're going to say y equals, I'll use a different color so you can see it better. I know it's kind of dark. y equals x squared minus x minus 6. We're going to just take this whole left side of the equation and do that. And then we're going to take the right side of the equation. You're all doing this with me in your Desmos. y equals 0. Okay. So in case you want to know what I'm doing, you can follow along with me. Aren't, what do you notice about that, that was straight line that's flat? Isn't that the x-axis? Did you notice that? Isn't that where, where the lines cross is where the answer is? So you got y equals, you said negative 2. I'm sorry, x equals negative 2 and 3, right? Does that make sense? So is it easier to graph or to do this by hand? Is it easier to use a graphing calculator or do it by hand? I think it's easier to graph and calculate. Didn't I just do this hard problem just by doing using decimals? Right? Okay, so I want you to practice this. This is your, your independent practice right now. And that concludes the lesson. I'm going to turn off light so you can see this better. I want you to uh, work these out. So this is numbers 1, 2, and 3. Tell me what the answers are for each of these, okay? So and I'm going to start you off on number 1, just so you have an idea. You're going to put y equals. You're going to take the whole left side of the equation negative 2x squared plus 3x plus 2, and then the right side will be y equals 0. And I want you to find the answers. I'm only going to give you like three minutes to do this because it will go really quickly, okay?